Hi, good afternoon. Uh, this is just a preview to the lecture today. This is the week three of Management Accounting 2. We want to cover three things, three things in today's lecture. Uh, two of them in more detail, but one of them very quickly. That is, we want to look at the principles of cost allocation. The second thing is customer profitability analysis. And the third thing is sales variance analysis. And some of the sales variance analysis may appear to you to be more computational than the other two, uh, but uh, don't be uh, deceived. Uh, custom profitability analysis can be very computational in itself, and also cost allocation, how you uh, allocate costs. So uh, we want to really skip over or move very quickly through cost allocation and I think the most important thing with cost allocation is just to understand the different criteria for cost allocation. There is a cause effect, that is the reason for allocating costs are based on cause and effect. There is the benefits received, uh, purpose for allocating costs, there's the fairness purpose and ability to bear the cost. And organisations around the world allocate costs according to some part of these four principles. Now to just make it easier, rather than trying to remember four, in reality there's probably only three because cause and effect and benefits received are very, very similar. When you receive a benefit from a department, that is kind of, you are actually causing another department to to incur costs in giving you that benefit. So benefits received is very similar to cause and effect. And then you have the other two which are fairness and finally ability to bear. Now today we want to talk a little bit more about the customer profitability analysis. And this is looks at the other side of the whole activity-based costing approach that we started last week and the week before. Activity-based costing, as you know, in Management and Accounting 1 is all about really dividing up the basis for allocating costs according to different types of activities. And in a simplified way, we're looking at facility level, batch level, unit level and product level, there are different levels in which we will divide up these activities because some activities are driven by how many units you make. Other activities are driven by basically that you're working in a whole fa a facility and you've got administration and corporate costs being allocated to the activities over a 12 month period and so those activities associated with administration corporate costs may not be allocated on a unit basis but they get allocated on a facility level basis and activities that are working in that facility. So we've got different levels of basis of allocation in activity based costing and in the same way we can apply that to customer profitability analysis. What's really interesting is that when you look at the, the profit and loss statement Customer profitability analysis is really a way of allocating the sales, administration and financing expenses that appear under the, under the cost of goods sold in the profit and loss statement. And as you know in the profit and loss statement, in management accounting we tend to focus on the cost of goods sold, we tend to focus on the manufacturing costs, we tend to focus on the costs associated with making something. Well, custom profitability analysis is all about trying to understand the different profitability of customers that you are selling to. Not all customers are the same and so we may want to allocate different costs to different customers because some customers are going to use your services more than others. Some customers are going to complain more than others. Some customers are going to extract greater benefits from you more than others. For example, some of them may have more negotiating power and so you may have to give greater discounts in order to sell uh, various orders to the, some customers. So based on that, we can 
allocate sales, financing, and administration expenses to different customers. And that can help us make economic decisions about, well, do we drop a customer? Do we take a new customer? Do we sell in one region and not another region? Um, we can make economic decisions about the benefits of having a customer loyalty program, the benefits of offering discounts. Do we give selective discounts or do we give across the board discounts? So when today's lecture we talk about how to allocate costs to customers, that allows us to make economic decisions about customers, who we have, who we keep, who we discard. So we're going to talk about that today. And finally in today's lecture, we're going to talk about sales, sales variance analysis. And as you know, in Management Accounting 1, we talked about the basic flexible budget variance, which was at the end of every accounting period, we we are going to sell a certain amount of quantity of products and we're going to sell a, this quantity at a certain price and maybe we have batches of different products and so there are different prices within that and different quantities but at the end of the accounting period we have actual quantity times actual price what we tend to do in budgeting is we want to flex the budget quantity to equal the actual quantity and then we'll multiply that by the budgeted price and the budgeted contribution margin and so again we're working with quantity times price and this can apply to one product or many products but we're looking at the actual quantity times the budgeted price that, or the budgeted contribution margin. We can have contribution margin in here if we're looking at price less costs or we can just look at price or we can just look at costs. So the whole idea in variance analysis is to start with what actually happened. This is actual. Then we may flex the budget reflects the budget to meet what we should have sold or what profit we should have made or what contribution we should have made given the actual sales we did make and the difference between this becomes the flexible budget variance then we have the standard pricing or standard contribution margin times the standard quantity or the standard quantity times the contribution margin so we have a instead of the actual quantity we're working with the standard or the budget quantity times the budgeted price or the budgeted contribution margin and so the difference between this group that is the flex budget and the original budget becomes not the price because we're both working with a budgeted price or contribution but it is the quantity and so if only the quantity changed between these two groups then we call it a volume variance and this one is the flexible budget variance and the reason why it we call it a flexible budget variance because we are flexing we are flexing the budget to meet what actually happened during the period and so in today's lecture we're not going to talk about these directly but because this was covered in management accounting one we're going to talk more about the volume variance we're going to actually break it down and the reason why we want to break it down because we can learn more about what happened, who is responsible, and how we may change our sales and marketing strategy to do better in the next period. So the purpose of breaking down and doing variance analysis is to find out who's responsible and to help formulate or make even more accurate the sales plan, the marketing plan 
for the coming period. And we're going to talk about that in today's lecture. So three things in today's lecture. The principles and the reasons why we do cost allocation. The whole value of assigning costs to different customers so we can work out the profitability and the value of that for economic decision making. And finally, we want to unpack the sales volume variance so we can make better economic decisions. So that's what we're going to cover in today's lecture. We're probably going to spend more time on number two and three. We're going to skip over very quickly number one and I hope you get some sense of how we can use management accounting to make better economic decisions in the organisation. Thank you.